He's hailed as an icon for the English, the man who won World War II and saved Britain from invasion. But have we misunderstood Winston Churchill? Was he a hero or a villain? Particu- any unifying myth, you know, is important. I'm just highly distressed by the uses to which the myths about World War II have been put in the context of modern foreign policy, particularly the war in Ukraine. And, but, but not just the war in Ukraine, so many others. You know, mm. Churchill's the good guy, Neville yeah. Chamberlain's the bad guy. And so I do think it's fair to ask, like, what, what really was going on? So, one, for example, but how would you assess Winston Churchill? Uh, I got in trouble with my podcast partner, Jocko Willink, one time because he's a New England Dutchman whose his family, it's near and dear to, uh, they're Dutch, but very near and dear to their heart that Winston Churchill is a hero, right? Well, everyone loves Everyone Churchill. thinks that, he really thinks that. And I told him that I think, and maybe I'm being a little little hyperbolic, maybe, but I told him, maybe trying to provoke him a little bit, that I thought Churchill was the chief villain of the Second World War. The role of Churchill in history has sparked debate online recently. This discussion is particularly relevant for men seeking to cultivate their warrior energy. Robert Moore, a prominent thinker on masculine empowerment, encouraged men to admire figures who embody qualities they wish to cultivate. He said, If you're trying to connect with the kind of masculine warrior energy that doesn't submit when things get tough, getting to know Churchill will make you stronger. Moore always cautioned that no man is perfect. Regarding Churchill, he explicitly stated, You don't look to him for all virtues. He didn't embody many other virtues, and was, in some ways, a tyrant, when it comes to the king side of things. We also know Churchill struggled with alcoholism, a condition often indicating a wound in the lover quadrant of the psyche. As Moore would say, Alcohol abuse is a man seeking the wrong type of spirit to fill a hole in his heart. But what is interesting are his links with the Jewish community, which I'll go into in a little bit of detail here, uh, because they've not been gone into by any of the other Churchill biographers, for obvious reason. In particular, the main authorised Churchill biographer, Martin Gilbert, hasn't gone into it for the simple reason that he's one himself, and he doesn't want to harp on, on, on that fact. For alternative views on Churchill's history, consider exploring the links below to David Irving's work or check out this Twitter thread starting with the provocative statement. Why I think Churchill was a chief villain of World War II. It's a lengthy thread, but one of the most thought-provoking reads I have ever had on Twitter. It's heavily community noted, but doesn't detract from suggesting a different perspective on World War II. Arguing that it was Churchill who wanted war with Germany, not the other way around. And the scary part of it is, as you read the chronology, it was slow escalation exactly as we see with NATO and Russia today. For what it's worth, in my view, Robert Moore was right in identifying Churchill as a prime example of the warrior archetype. But history leaves us questioning. Who was Churchill really fighting for? Like anyone with a hint of the tyrant, it was likely his own self-interest why he continually escalated the war refusing opportunities for peace, and ultimately bankrupting the British Empire. 